laid on Doppler effect is the apparent Doppler effect is the apparent change in the frequency. Apparent change in the frequency <coughs> due to due to the motion of due to the motion of source or observer. There will be someone who is creating sound and someone who is listening to the sound. Listener is observer, creator is the source. Okay, so if source and the uh, observer, they start moving, then the actual frequency they will not hear. The observer will not hear the actual frequency, Ob observer will hear some other frequency. Okay, and if if you find out the relation between what is the frequency the observer will hear based on how fast they are moving, observer can have an instrument to calculate the frequency and if the observer knows what was the original frequency, he can calculate what is the velocity of the source. Are you getting it? So using this Doppler effect, radar, sonar, all these things are based on this, okay? In fact, they are using Doppler effect on light also. You know what is a red shift? The galaxies are moving far away from each other. The apparent frequency is moving towards the frequency of the red, okay? So that will happen only when they are moving with a certain velocity away from the observer. Who is observer? The Earth is the observer. You are the observer who is observing the light from the galaxy. Okay, so you know if you know the actual frequency of the star in the galaxy and you know what frequency you are getting, if you have the mathematical formula, you can calculate based on these two information what is the velocity of the galaxy. Similarly, what is the velocity of the of the enemy aircraft or what is the velocity of the ship when it is moving on the move moving in the sea. Okay, so what happens is that in radar one frequency is thrown in the air. Okay, suppose I throw 300 hertz frequency in air, it will get reflected from a moving aircraft and I will get that frequency back. Depending on how fast that aircraft is moving and where it is moving, I get a different frequency. So if I have the formula or equation with me, which will relate what is the actual frequency, what frequency I will get, and what, what could be the velocity of that aircraft, I will calculate the velocity of the aircraft. Okay, simple equation is used and this is a very effective method of doing all of these things, radar, sonar and the redshift. Okay, this is what we are going to hear. What, this is what we are going to do. So here we have one source, one observer. So we are going to take a simple scenario. One source is there, one observer is there and they are moving close to each other, away from each other and things like that, okay? So please write down situation one. <coughs> Source is stationary. Observer is moving. So, we are not considering both of them are moving. One by one we'll consider and then club it. Okay. So, let's say this line represents source. This is source. What happened? You could just use relative velocity and no. always. No. Because the sound is traveling in the medium. Sound, source is not sound. Sound velocity doesn't depend on velocity of source depends on the medium. There are three things moving. Sound is also moving. Listen here. There will be source, there will be observer. Let's say the distance between them is L0. Okay? And the observer is moving away from the source <coughs> with a velocity of V0. Getting it? Now, I am going to find out what is the frequency the observer will hear, okay? The frequency that source is throwing away is N0 
the observer will get n. I want to find out what is n depending on n naught and v naught. Got it? Speed of sound is given as c. Okay. Now you need to listen to this carefully because this de derivation, most of the students do not get it. Okay, because it is slightly tricky. See, I am going to find out the time intervals between which the observer will receive the pulse. Okay, let's let's uh, uh, if if I say that time period of pulse is t naught here, the frequency is one by t naught. Okay. If time period is t here, the frequency with observer will observe n is 1 by t. Simple, right? So let's say that at t equal to 0, the first pulse has left from here. Okay? So at what time the pulse will reach here? Tell me what could be the time here. What will be the time? Pulse is moving with what velocity? C. 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 And this is moving with V0 velocity? C minus C so, relative velocity is C minus, C minus V0. <coughs> distance is L0, distance of approach. So, time it will take to travel, the first pulse will reach at a time of L0 divided by C minus V0. Okay? Now, second pulse will start from here at what time? T equal to 0 was the first pulse. Second pulse will be at t equal to? T equal to t naught. Good. So, time period is t naught. So, after t naught, next pulse will go. So, if I know what time it reaches there, time period over here will be t2 minus t1. If I find out the time it reaches here is t2, the second pulse, t2 minus t1 will be the time period. Right? So, what is t2? Now, tell me what is t2. L not plus V naught by C minus V naught. L not plus V naught by C minus V Correct. So, see, by the next pulse when it starts, the distance between them grows by a distance of V naught T naught. Yes or no? By the time next pulse is thrown from this side, the uh, observer will move a distance of V naught T naught. <coughs> So now the distance becomes L naught plus V naught T naught. So T two will be what? No, no, it's it's T naught plus that. Yeah. T naught time has already gone plus L naught plus V naught T naught C minus V C minus V naught. Okay. Now just let's do this thing. Let's find out T three. So, third pulse will leave from here at what time? T equal to 2 T naught. How much this have moved further? V naught T naught more? It is moving with constant velocity of V naught. So, by the time third pulse is thrown from here, this uh, observer would have moved by 2 V naught T naught total distance. So, T3 would be 2 T naught is gone plus a distance of L naught plus 2 V naught T naught divided by C minus V naught. Okay? So, basically it is receiving pulse at T1, then T2, and then T3. So, time period of receiving pulses will be T2 minus T1 or T3 minus T2. Just check both of them are equal or not. Both of them are equal? How much? T0 plus T1 plus T1 plus T1 T0 plus T1 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 Combine it, no? just add it up. So it will be uh, this minus that will be T naught plus 
V0 T0 by C minus V0. So take T0 common, it will get C by C minus V0 times T0. This is what you will get? Yeah. And here also you will get the same thing. So after every this time period, it will receive pulses. Any doubt? So time period is this. So frequency will be? One minus n will be equal to inverse of this c minus v naught by c times 1 by t naught. 1 by t naught is what? Original frequency. Yeah. Original frequency n naught. So this is what the observer will hear. So how do you get that? Inverse of time period. Time period is this. Inverse of time period is frequency. So, invert karo. So, 1 by T naught will come. The 1 by T naught is original frequency. T naught is original time period of the pulse. Any other doubt? Sir, Why T2 is the time it reaches the second line, right? T2 is the time when the second pulse which has started from here at T naught reaches there. But after T naught, the observer would have moved further by a distance of V naught T naught. So total distance will be L naught plus V naught T naught. Any other doubt? Quite out near. Doubtless. Okay. Yeah, it's very easy, right? For now. Yeah, because I am telling you. <laughs> Okay, write down. Source is moving, observer is stationary. So we only need to develop a final formula. Final formula I tell at the end. This is just intermediate formula. Source moving and observer at rest. So this is the source again, and this is the observer. Let's say length is L naught. So you remember, right, whatever we have done. Now assume that the source is moving in this side with velocity of V s, speed of sound is c. Can you derive it yourself? Upper end frequency. So we take V naught positive when it's moving towards the other. You have added to the. Don't introduce sign convention right now. We have derived it properly when it was going that side. Okay, we we'll come back to that. But right now you derive for this scenario. The first pulse. T1 will be what? The first pulse will receive. L0 by, not by C plus V. L0 by C. It will be C or C plus V. It will be C only. Okay? Velocity of sound depends only on the medium. Got it? Because speed of sound. It doesn't matter what source is doing. Speed of sound depends on the medium. It depends on the medium property. Okay? Like for example, if I run and shout, speed with which the sound will travel will be 330 only. My running will not affect the velocity of the sound. Okay? Now second pulse, so, uh -huh. so then the previous case also the speed of the same, right? Because ha, huh, correct. The previous case, the relative velocity have taken between uh, the oh, between the sound and the observer. Observer is observing that sound, but now observer is at rest. So relative velocity between sound and the observer is speed of sound only. Observer has zero velocity. The sound is reaching the observer. Sound is not reaching source. Got it? So at t equal to t naught, second pulse is released. Yeah. What is the time? L naught minus v naught t naught by c plus t naught. So t two will be equal to t naught 
plus V S T naught divided by C. What about T three? Two T naught plus L naught minus two T naught. Okay. So now let's talk about the time period. Time period received by the observer is. T2 minus T1, yeah. which will be equal to T3 minus T2. This is how much? No, T0 minus T0 minus T0 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 T
flying over someone's head. Suppose this is you, an aircraft is here flying with velocity V, and you are hearing the sound created by the aircraft. So who is source? Aircraft is the source. So velocity source is what? V. No, it is not that simple. You need to join the line between source and the observer and find out the component of velocity along this line. So if this is theta, you have to take V cos theta. With V cos theta, it is going away from the observer. Getting it? Understood? No doubts, right? This is always separation or approach. Huh. Always separation or approach. V sin theta will not create anything. So here we have to subtract it, right? Because sound and movement and all this direction. Yeah. Huh, it is going away and it is source. So it will be C divided by C plus V cos theta. So apparent frequency will decrease. It is going away. Okay? But if it is exactly at the top of the head, the component of velocity in that direction is zero. So right now it will hear the exact same frequency if it is exactly above the head. 